Hello, Brad Schelke here at Conversations with Mormons. This is part 10 of Opening Eyes to Life. Last week we touched on the meaning of God is love. This week we'll dive deeper into the nature of love. I talk almost exclusively about love with Mormons. Why do I do this? Simple. Mormons love to talk a lot about trying to be good people and about trying hard to have perfect morals. It would be silly to argue with them about this because on the outside they look like they are being very moral. However, Jesus says that no matter how hard we try to be morally good, only love can fulfill all of the moral laws. If it is true that love fulfills every moral law, then every single thing regarding the moral world has to do with love. If we are honest with ourselves, we know that we are all gripped by pride far more than we want to admit. Our pride craves recognition for our good behavior. I'm trying to be a moral person, remember? Our desire to take credit for our morality takes love out of the equation. If I'm a good person, why does love get all the credit? This blinds us to the true nature of love. This applies to me, and it also applies to the next Mormon I meet, who may not know it yet. I delight to live among Mormons and use my questions to lead them to notice their confusion by making the moral considerations of love obvious, intuitively obvious. It is obvious because God has written every nuance of love, which is moral goodness, on our souls. Why isn't this obvious to us? Paul declares that we all suppress that knowledge in irreverence and unrighteousness. I'm totally convinced that Paul is spot on. I count a privilege to help Mormons discover the treasure of God's goodness hidden in their souls. Their faces often fill with joyful surprise as they hear their own words in answer to my questions. Don't just believe me, let's go for a ride. Last week I mentioned my common question, true or false, God is the source of all moral goodness. Everyone sees that question as about moral goodness because it's on the surface. Everyone says it's true. That question begs another question. How can I do the good I know I should do if all goodness comes from God? That's what the letter of James explains. That question leads naturally to my favorite question. What's the difference between trying to love and trusting to love? Almost no one has heard that question before, and almost no one has even been able to hazard a guess, not even Christians. Why not? I think it's because we've been tricked into thinking that being good is all about self-effort, which is Satan's counterfeit way of loving. Trusting to love is all about trusting God to love through us. I speak about co-loving with God in previous episodes. Here's a question I often ask to make Mormons curious for deeper conversation. True or false, love is not a feeling, action, or commitment. Let me say that again. True or false, love is not a feeling, not an action, and not a commitment. Almost everyone says that's false. What would you say? Last year, I asked that question of a Mormon student at USU, a freshman in psychology. She gave an unusual answer as she immediately and boldly declared that it was obviously true because love is a way of wisdom. I asked how she knew that at 18 when I had meditated on the meaning of love for many years before discovering it. She said she just knew it. She and I then had a good gospel conversation. I quote her to Mormons who answer false to my question. They are intrigued by her words and want to know why she would say that. I ask more simple intuitive questions and Mormons find themselves surprised to discover a new meaning of the cross. I assign almost every Mormon I meet to thank God for their new discovery about the cross, that Jesus died to take care of all their sins without their help and their job is to trust him. I model it for them to imprint it and make it easier. Mormons wonder how love can be a way of wisdom. Do you? Wisdom through love is the only way to have right relationships in the moral world, the way right relationships actually work. Another word for right relationships would be righteousness, which is another thing we trust to get rather than try to get from God. Jesus says he is the way, the truth, and the life. Since that sums up all of life, it means that Jesus is also the way of right relationships. Could life really be all about trusting who Jesus is for us? Next week, I'll begin walking you through my conversation with Meg, a USU student leaving on her Mormon mission two weeks later. Until then, please join me in thanking God that love is His moral goodness as all of life for us every moment, every day. Welcome to the conversation.